This is Algebra 2 at BCS, and today's lesson is called Exploring Transformations. Now, there are three general kinds of transformations that we want to talk about today. What are they? Well, the first kind of transformation that we want to talk about is called a translation. And that's broken up into two separate parts. The next kind that we want to talk about is called a reflection. And that's broken up into two parts. Now, the last category that we want to talk about is called stretches and compressions. But stretching and compression is broken up into four parts. So in today's lesson, we have two, two, and four on those three categories. So first thing I want to do, let's talk about translations. And let's try to figure out translations and how they work. So you have two kinds of translations. You've got both horizontal and you have vertical translations. Horizontal translations, each point shifts right or left by a fixed number of units. So what happens is we have the ordered pair x comma y and we add a real number to the x component. Now that real number, which I've labeled here as h, can be positive or negative. If h is positive, then this is a shift to the right. If h is negative, this is a shift to the left. So the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to allow h to be 3. So what will happen is my ordered pair right here, 4, 3, will become four plus three comma three. And so that's seven comma three. So what happens? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven comma three. And we would call that a prime, which is the translated point. Okay. What happens if I let H be negative? <clears throat> Now I've chosen h to be negative 4. So what happens to the ordered pair is that 4 comma 3 becomes 4 plus negative 4 comma 3. And 4 plus negative 4 is 0. So 0 comma 3 is right here. And so that's a shift four units to the left. And so that's how you do horizontal shifting. Vertical translations, <clears throat> each point shifts up or down by a fixed number of units. So the ordered pair x comma y translates into a new ordered pair x comma y plus some number, we'll call it k. Now, if k is positive, then this is a translation up. If k is negative, then this is a translation down. So here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let k equal 3. So my ordered pair, negative 4, negative 2, becomes negative 4, negative 2, translates into negative 4, negative 2 plus 3. And negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So this becomes negative 4, negative 1, or positive 1, excuse me, not negative, positive 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1. There's B prime. So this was a shift upwards or translated upwards three units. Okay, let me choose a new value of k. <clears throat> Let's say k is equal to negative 2. What happens there? Well, my ordered pair, negative 4, negative 2, becomes negative 4, comma, negative 2 minus 2, which is negative 4, negative 4. 
And so negative four, negative four is right here. There's B prime prime. And so that's a shift downwards two units. And so that's how you handle translations. Horizontal goes left and right. Vertical translations go up and down. All right, I think we're ready for reflections. So let's talk about reflections. First, let's talk about a reflection across the y-axis. Reflections across the y-axis. What happens is you take the ordered pair x comma y and you change the sign of the x value and only the x value. So here's 2 comma 5. If I change the sign from 2, it becomes negative 2. So 1, 2 up 5 is right here. There's x prime. This is now a reflection across the y-axis. This ordered pair is now at negative 2 comma 5. Here's y at negative 3 comma negative 3. If I change the x value from negative 3 to positive 3, this now goes 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Here's y prime at 3 comma negative 3. And that's a reflection across the y-axis. So to reflect across the y-axis, is simply to change the sign of the x-coordinate. That's it. Reflections across the x-axis, the ordered pair x comma y becomes the new ordered pair x comma negative y. And so that means we change the sign of the y value. So here's negative 4 comma 5. If I change the sign of the y value, it becomes negative 4, negative 5. So here's w prime at negative 4, negative 5. And that's a reflection over the x-axis. Here's 5, comma, negative 2. If I change the sign of the y value, that becomes positive 2. Here's v prime at 5, 2. And that's a reflection over the x-axis. So this topic, reflections, has to do with changing the sign of either the x value, that would reflect over the y-axis, or the y value, that would reflect over the x-axis. If you change both the x and the y, that is another kind of reflection, which we'll talk about in another video. But by changing the x and the y, that becomes a reflection over what's called the origin. So if I took this point w, negative 4, negative 5, and changed both coordinates, it would become positive 4, negative 5, which would reflect down here. And so that would reflect across the origin. We're going to save those for a later video, but I thought it would be a good idea to at least mention it. Okay, now this is going to lead us to our last topic here, which is called stretches and compressions. Now, this particular category is broken up into four parts because we have horizontal stretching and vertical stretching, but we've also got horizontal compression and vertical compression. And stretching and compression has to do with multiplying your ordered pair by a number. So let's look at the case of the horizontal stretch. Each point is pulled away from the y-axis. So, if I have a real number larger than zero, then my ordered pair x comma y, and actually I need it to be more than zero, I need it to be greater than one. So it's got to be larger than one. <clears throat> Excuse me. The ordered pair x comma y becomes this real number times the x component. So for right now, let me go ahead and set b 
equal to 2. And let me show you what will happen to these ordered pairs here. And so I want to horizontally stretch them. So this ordered pair here, but if I multiply the x value, 2 by 2, that becomes 4. So this is 4 comma 1. So this point goes 1, 2, 3, 4 comma 1. So this point gets stretched or pulled away from the y-axis. This ordered pair right here is 3 comma 4. 3 comma 4. Now, if I multiply 3 by 2, I get 6. So this would become 6 comma 4. And so now we have this. So it's been pulled out. It's been pulled away from the y-axis. Now let's do the other side. This point is at negative 3 comma 1. So if I take negative 3 and multiply it by 2, I get negative 6. So this would become negative 6 comma 1. This order of pair, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is at negative 4 comma 4. If I multiply negative 4 by 2, I get negative 8. So that'll become negative 8 comma 4. And there we go. Now look what happened in the final graph. It got stretched horizontally, which means it got pulled away from the y-axis. All that by multiplying the x value by a number bigger than 1. Okay, let's look at vertical stretching. Vertical stretching, each point is pulled away from the x-axis. B, again, has to be bigger than 1. But this time you're multiplying not the x value, but the y value. So I'm going to go ahead again and I'm going to let b equal 2. Now the only numbers you cannot stretch vertically are the numbers that already sit on the x-axis. So this ordered pair here, where my finger is, that's 2 comma 0. If b equals 2, what's 2 times 0? It's still 0. Now what that means is that points that are on the x-axis cannot be stretched. So 2 comma 0 will stay at 2 comma 0. You can't vertically stretch points on the x-axis. But this ordered pair, this is at 3 comma 2, and the y value is 2. So what's 2 times 2? It's 4. So this would become 3 comma 4. So this point would get stretched up to here. This ordered pair is at negative 3 comma 3, no, comma 2. So the y value is 2. 2 times 2 is also 4. So now we have that. This ordered pair is at 0, negative 1. And negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So this would be at 0, negative 2. And now let's see what happened. And so what happened is the curve got stretched. It got pulled away from the x-axis. So that's how vertical stretching works. In both cases, for horizontal stretching and for vertical stretching, the number you choose must be larger than 1. Must. OK? Well, we're pretty close now to the end. So let's finish this. Uh, let's try to look at horizontal compression. So let me try to zoom in on my horizontal compression part. 
<clears throat> you yep. hope that works. Now it says what? Each point, oops, let's zoom that over. Wrong way. There we go. Good. Each point is pushed towards the y axis. Now, what's different here? The value of B has to be between 0 and 1. So B has to be a number like 1 half or 1 third or 0.1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to horizontally compress. I'm going to let B equal 1 half. So this ordered pair right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is at 6, 4. I multiply the 6 by a half, and I get 3. So that becomes 3, 4. So this ordered pair is at 4, 2. So I multiply 4 by a half, and I get 2. So now that point goes to 2 comma 2. And this point over here also gets cut in half, so that point is now there. And this point at negative 6 gets cut in half, so now it's negative 3 comma 4. Let's try to line this up. And now, there we go. So this got compressed. This got pulled in or pushed in towards the y-axis. And finally, in the case of vertical compression, your B value, again, has to be between 0 and 1. But this time, we're multiplying the y value by B. So again, I'm going to let B equal 1 half. This ordered pair here, this is at 0, 5. And so if I multiply 5 by 1 half, I get 2.5. And so this point comes here, 2 and a half. But these points are sitting on the x-axis, so their y values are 0. And you can't stretch or compress vertically points that are on the x-axis. So 0 times 1 half is still 0. 0 times 1 half is still 0. So my final curve looks more like this now. And so this has been compressed vertically. The points have been pushed towards the x-axis. And so that is the big picture of the lesson. Let's go back to our three categories now that you need to know. First part, translations. So that's broken up into two portions. Oh, I'm not quite there yet. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Here we go. Translations. That's broken up into two portions, horizontal and vertical. Then comes reflections. That's broken up into two portions. Reflection across the y-axis, reflection across the x-axis. And lastly, oops, wrong way. There we go is stretching and compression. And that is broken up into four components, all depending upon which part of the ordered pair you multiply. So in the horizontal case, you multiply the x value. In the vertical case, you multiply the y value. But in order to stretch, you need to multiply by a number bigger than 1. And in order to compress, you need to multiply by a number between 0 and 1. And that is as far as this particular video is going to go. Those are the three big ideas of Lesson 1.8. God bless you, wherever you are today.